people to live a peaceful life with intentional mastery. Enjoy a survey of inspiring topics such as abundance, intention, health, manifestation, love, and transformation. It's all right here. Leading authors, speakers, coaches, entrepreneurs with stories and messages to support your well-being, let alone your most evocative dreams. Hey, 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 it's another groovy day. And most of you know, but I'm going to tell you anyway, that's because I make it that way. When I get up in the morning and when my feet hit the ground, I already decided that it's going to be a groovy day. And then when I go out throughout my day and things change or something happens, I always think back. Hey, I started out a groovy day and it's going to be groovy the rest of the day and I keep right on going. So that's the way I do it. It's also Groovy Days because I get to hang out with some really cool people. It's Tuesday, Life Mastery Radio Day. My good friend Jackie is here, and we found a really cool person for us to interview today and to share with you some of her thoughts and ideas for you to use on your very own Life Mastery journey. But before we get started... I always like to get myself centered and situated and organized and ready to hear and create some great content for you. So let's just take a minute and think about what it is that you connect to. What, what is, what's considered your higher power? It could be the dude, it could be Allah, it could be God, maybe the tree or the doorknob that closes the door in your safe space. But think about that. What is it that you connect to? Let's take in a deep breath all the way down into your lower abdomen. And then let that breath out with just a big ah. And let let that awareness of that connection just flow up through your heart center, out of your throat chakra, and out of your speaker box into the universe. Uh, Let's do that one more time. In with a deep breath. And this time... Think about those dreams, visions, and goals. What do you aspire to to be, have? Think about that. Anchor it. In with a deep breath. And again, out with just a big ah. And let that flow up through, out of your speaker box, out into the universe. Ah. And for sure, allow the universe the opportunity to make those come true for you because it will happen if you let it and if you think about it and give it enough focus. And we're going to talk about that some more today, I am sure. Hi, Jackie. My co-host is with me today. Are you ready to have some fun? We're going to have a blast today. This is going to be a great show because our guest has a fabulous book that everybody needs to hear about. So I'm glad that we are the voice of her book today, (laughs) at least for a little while. (laughs) We're going to put that content out there. Clue us in a little bit while I grab the Facebook live feed and share it around. Clue us a little bit about what's going on at the Speak, Feed, Lead project. Well, you know, the Speak, Feed, Lead project is a nonprofit. And as many of you listeners know, we empower children, teens, and young adults with the skills to help them feel of self-worth and self-confident to tell their unique story, to share it with the world in powerful ways. And we've, we've got lots of summer classes lined up for the kids throughout the rest of this month and next and into August. And we also have some classes now, some workshops coming up for parents to, to participate with their children. So we call it the Parent and Progeny Get Reacquainted Workshop. So that is so that you can get to know your kids again. A lot of parents are saying, you know what? We've dealt with a lot of icky stuff the last year and a half. And even though we've been at home with our kids, we're all sort of in our own little bubbles and we've figured out our own little things to do and we're not connecting anymore, even though we're all in the same house all day long. (laughs) <laughs> and so it's necessary to, to get reacquainted with your kids. And so we, these workshops are going to be three days in a row, 90 minutes each, probably during an evening where parents can be done with their work schedules and so forth. And then they can just devote 90 minutes for three consecutive days to have fun with some improv, with some real soft competitions with other partnerships 
and open communication. We're going to prove to you that it can be fun to actually talk to each other. <laughs> so we've got those lined up. Um, we'll get and that more starts soon. There. That starts pretty soon. The first one is the end of this month. It's it's mostly for those in Pacific time zone, but we're going to get some more out there for for everybody else soon. So keep keep watching for that. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. What have you heard any great testimonials for parents? Share share a testimonial that maybe amped you up a little bit. Have you collected? Yeah, I'm sure you've collected some of those. Yeah, we actually have great little videos on the website now of actual students telling us what they've gained from our classes. And so listen to that. But I think one of those that really stand out for me is a student I had a couple of years ago that enjoyed the public speaking so much that he wanted to give back. And he came to me a year or so ago and said, hey, I really want to give more kids this opportunity. So I'm going to start a public speaking club at my school. Can you help me do that? Of course I said yes. And we ended up actually sponsoring it. So it became a Toastmaster gavel club instead of something at his school. And that worked out really well during the pandemic because we, our kids are still meeting online. Every couple of weeks, our gavel club meets. We got 27 members of the gavel club. And so these kids age 10 and up get together and they support each other in speaking and they give them feedback and they all take leadership roles. And so thanks, to, that was Charlie. Thanks to Charlie for seeing the value of it and wanting to give it back. And Thank he just know. won, he just won a speech contest too. Is he still cruising? <laughs> he did, yeah, he did a pretty good job. Now at the area contest, he had a wonderful speech, but I'll tell you what, he went over time. Oh, oh he was hurts. disqualified. I know, but been there, done that. Oh my gosh, that hurts. Was really good, but he did go over time a little bit. So very cool. Um, well, check it out some more. They can check it out at the speakfeedlead.org. Did I get it? I got it right that time. Speakfeedlead.org. Yep. I want to remind our listeners that today's show page is at www.lifemasterradio.net. You can go there, find everything out. All the links that we're going to talk about today with our guest will be right there. And while you're there, you can sign up for our newsletter. Jackie creates a newsletter every week. It goes out. It talks about who's been on the show, who's coming on the show. And she writes a little blog post about the show. And it's, she does a really good job. Sometimes I think, how did she get all that out of that show? <laughs> because I'm just cruising along, speaking from my heart and interviewing the guests and having fun. And I'm like, uh, she does an amazing job. So sign well, up for that newsletter. I go back and listen to it again and pull out <laughs> even more nuggets than I got the first time. <laughs> hey, that's a good, I should do that, right? Also, while you're there, Jackie has a book. I have a book. The links are there. My book is Six Keys to Life Mastery. And her book is Self-Centered Leadership. And they are both really cool. They're both at Amazon. You're going to love them. And after you love them, leave us some feedback on Amazon. Tell us what you thought. Pretty cool. Okay, what else do we have, Jackie? I think that's it. Sign up for the newsletter. On with the show. Our guest today is Kate Ekman. And Kate is a broadcast journalist, TV personality, and author of the Full Spirit Workout. She brings her expertise in communications, performance, and mindfulness to her practice as a success coach, a very successful success coach. There, that's a mouthful for business leaders and professional athletes. She is an accomplished entrepreneur, elite athlete, mindfulness expert, and Columbia University certified executive coach. And her book that I already talked about a little bit, but I'm going to say it again, The Full Spirit Workout, a 10-step system to shed your self-doubt, strengthen your spiritual core, and create a fun and fulfilling life. What a fun book, Kate. Welcome to the show. How are you today, my friend? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. It's my joy to be here with you guys. You put, you put quite a spin on something we're all familiar with, and that is working physically working out, but you spun it into mind, body, and wellness. That's pretty cool. Thank you. You know, I was, I kind of had mastered the physical fitness earlier in life as a competitive swimmer for 17 years. And 
I wanted a system that would train my attitudinal muscles, my mental, emotional, spiritual muscles, because like most people, I went about my life and, and I was struggling with the emotional gravity in the world, like stress and fear, anxiety, recently COVID-19, loss of a job, <laughs> loss a big... of a loved one. I mean, all the, the comparison judgment, all of the kind of icky things that we deal with that sorry to say, but a lot of it isn't going anywhere. So it's really up to us to get uh, strengthened and fit and, and confident and resilient on the inside. Very cool. Did you always know you had a book in you? I, I think so. I, I was writing articles for several publications for years. And so it kind of felt like that next step or progression, but I was so busy and, and my other careers in life. And quite frankly, as you both know, who has time to write a book? It is so much work um, and not just writing it, but then editing it and, and the whole process, it, it will stretch you past the point of no return. You both know. So thank you for laughing. Um, it, it's good. We have our little club because I, I don't think a lot of people really understand, but um, this project is so much bigger than me. And it really is a divine assignment. And, and one of my greatest life assignments that I've taken on for, for God and, and for um, Sam and Roth, the two men I dedicated the book to who are no longer with us. And, and to everyone like them who struggles with mental health issues, which as I'm discovering is everybody. So it, it really is um, bigger than me. <laughs> and, true. you know, I think that the more we can be honest and, and frank about what we're experiencing and, and erasing any shame or stigma and just be real, the sooner we all get back to a, a place of confidence and hope and um, really start to be able to do and attract what we really want and live the life that we say we want instead of making excuses. That is so true. That's interesting that you said that about we all have our own mental problems. It's I was in a discussion with my kids and they were telling me about some ailments and this and that. And I was just like, but that's a gift. That's, that's really a gift. You should, you should really grasp onto that. That's nothing to be ashamed of or um, put yourself down about because that will take you places. And that's what I was thinking is, is we all have these issues. We all, but it's how we deal with it. Right, Kate? Isn't that the deal? Yeah. And I think just remembering that we are human and part of the human experience, whether we like it or not, are feelings other than happiness. <laughs> you know, it's just, there's a full spectrum of emotions. And, you know, I, as I like to say, wow, that was really sad. It's appropriate that I was sad. Or at, at some point, if you haven't experienced anxiety or depression this past year, then I worry about you. You're, you're not looking or, or maybe your life is perfect, but if everyone around you is suffering, I, I don't know how, how you don't feel some of that and, and don't care and don't want to get involved in some way. And so I think it is important to start normalizing what it means to have a bad day and to move through it. And the, the great thing about when we do that is you feel your emotion, you witness it, you let it move through you and it's gone in a minute or two rather than stuffing it. And it comes back with a but vengeance or or as you know, we, we judge ourselves and others like, oh, that person was really this or, oh, I, I, I got really angry over this upsetting thing. I'm too enlightened to be angry. So it's just like, no, let's all stop thinking we're too positive or too precious to feel something other than than joy. Right. Oh, you, well, you nailed it. Yeah, that's so powerful for you to say that, Kate, because you've been one of those people who other people probably misjudged a lot in that you are you're beautiful. You were talented. You seemed to be on top of the world, but it wasn't necessarily the case. You weren't feeling that way anyhow, right? So yeah. tell, us, tell us about how you started on this journey to create these 10 steps that you, that you put in your book. And, and thank you for the compliment. And that it's so interesting. It's, it's come up again and again. And I had a woman in a, a live TV interview where you don't, it's five minutes and there's not a lot of time, but just say, well, you're young and beautiful. You get everything you want. And I just, you know, I, I handled it with grace. I'm glad I've done a lot of live TV in my career, but I thought, wow. And like, are we still doing this, especially as women, like just judging one another. And the first thing that came to mind that I didn't say was, wow, I get everything I want. The love of my life jumped off a bridge, you know? And, and that's even, you better not even say that to a lot of people because you get judged right there or that's too oh, much. Yeah. Or it's like, why are you talking about suicide? Or this is uncomfortable for me. And so 
I felt that shame and stigma, even being, you know, the product of, of losing a loved one to suicide. And so I think we have to stop judging ourselves because then we will stop judging other people. And I have worked with some of the best of the best cream of the crop have everything, all the shiny objects, money, fame, good looks, and they aren't happy on the inside. Because what I've learned is that when we place all of our worth outside of ourselves and the externals, we can never have enough or be enough. And you might get the thing and you're really happy for 20 minutes. And then it's like the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And as you know, as you get more and more successful, you've got more and more stuff and it takes more and more and more to satisfy you. And what science says is that our brains get used to stuff. So it's now you're like, you're in your million dollar dream home. And it's like, well, I need a $5 million home because the neighbors <laughs> down the street or that guy from college just, you know, it's just, it's sick. Um, I certainly catch myself caught up in that, that culture and that sick societal standard because I will be on social media or I'll flip through the channels and see a very famous family. And it's like, oh, I'm so lacking because I don't live in a $20 million mansion. And it's just like, whoa. So I think it's just becoming aware, but it, it just starts with that place of, of non-judgment. And I think just being um, really kind and compassionate towards everyone because you have no idea what they're dealing with behind the scenes. And, and ourselves. Yeah. And, and ourselves. Yeah. You said something yeah. and I know it as if we talk to our best friend the way we talk to ourselves, we probably wouldn't have a best friend. So it not only starts by not judging other people, but it's being kind to ourselves. Yeah. And I, you know, a story that just came to mind, as you said that I was staying with my friend Krista and at her home in LA and she came out one morning and in my mind, I'm like, wow, she looks stunning. You know, like going to, going to work on a Wednesday and she came out like my hate, my hair and this, and I've gained weight. And she was <laughs> ripping herself apart. And I, she tells me this story all the time. I said, stop it right now. Like yelled at her and she's like, whoa. And I said, that's my friend you're talking about. Knock it off. <laughs> and she, she says, I think of that story all the time. Cause I'm like, how dare you speak about my friend like that? Or we get so oh, offended when so we're, cool. you know, judged or rejected by others. But that's, that's what I had to get really clear with, with myself. It said, and say, you have judged yourself and criticized yourself harsher than anyone. So um, yes, you can, you know, be upset for a second by that rude comment or whatever that I speak openly about, but ultimately we got to clean up our own inner critic. That's dishing out some pretty harsh judgments. Yeah. And negative thoughts. You talk a lot of, in your book about negative thoughts, maybe speak to us a little bit about the impact those have on us. That's crazy stuff too. Yeah. I think we, we don't even realize where they come from. And so for me, I had to go way back and all of us, by the way, have to go back. Cause we have this origin story. We picked up some lie um, which we've made our truth. And it's a limiting belief for me. I talk about being the little four-year-old at the swim club and overhearing the swim instructor communicate to my mother that he didn't think I was a very good swimmer. And, and my, my four-year-old self translating that into a mentality that said, oh gosh, I, I better perform at a high level so that my mom and dad are, are proud of me and love me and I can feel safe in the world. And I, 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 I need to impress strangers. I better get it together. I've got to be a champion swimmer, even though I don't like swimming or I'm not going to feel safe in the world. And so it's just like, no, um, you know, because I, I, I did become a champion swimmer and, and, but at, at what cost I was absolutely obsessed with performance and perfectionism and impressed Pressing others. And I was in constant turmoil with the pain of anxiety and insecurity. So, and, and who cares what some guy at the swim club says about anything, quite frankly, and, and what other people say, it's just a projection of their own reality. And so <laughs> it's deleting those thoughts, but for, first we have to know that we have it and go back yeah. to where does that even come from? Because we carry it with us our whole lives. We collect evidence for why it is true. And we dismiss the compliments. We dismiss the praise. And so it really is being conscious, deleting that thought into the trash. I'm like looking at my computer. So it's like the toxic virus on your computer. You delete to the trash and then co-create a new thought uh, system for yourself based on the facts. And I love that you started this with us connecting to spirit because our, our spirit can never be criticized or rejected. So connect with that higher power. Like what you said, maybe it's the tree, maybe it's the doorknob, whatever it is for you and, and download more of the truth and, and live your life from that place. That's very cool. Yeah, that really is. And, and I, I have this realization that 
we're all, we're judging each other. I mean, if you're wealthy, you're judging the poor. If you're poor, you're judging the wealthy. And in reality, we all have the same emotions. We all experience life generally the same way. We do it maybe in different parts of the world or in different houses or cities or whatever, but we are all experiencing the same emotions and we're all having to deal with them, get over them and heal from them. I mean, that's just what life is all about. And so I, I like in your book that these 10 steps you offer, which are really a metaphor to working out physically, that it just gives this really easy, let me, let me master step one <laughs> and then I'll get to step two. So I think your step one is the stretch, stretch your comfort zone. So tell us a little bit about how, how you begin to get either comfortable with where you are or get uncomfortable with where you are, whatever it takes, right? Yeah. And, and this, this system is directional. It's not linear. So you can skip around, you know, some people go to the gym. It's like, I'm doing leg day today, or I'm doing arm day, or I just need a quick, a quick stretch today, or I need a high intensity. So have, have fun with it. Fun is in the subtitle. This is fun. This is an easy read. It's something that you will want to return to again and again. I made sure it was that way because <laughs> I've been to the, the gym where I'm like, I hate this. I'm never coming back. And then I've been to the <laughs> class or the gym where I'm like, I love this. I feel great. I forgot I was even working out because I was having so much fun right. and I'm, I'm seeing and feeling the results, but uh, we got to start with the stretch, just like a physical exercise. We don't, we don't pull an emotional muscle here. And, and our comfort zone is really just this arbitrary boundary that we've created in our minds based on fear. And just like with the limiting belief, you can delete at, at any time. And the thing about stretching our comfort zone is you just have to be willing to put yourself out there. And, and when you do, and as if I've, I've experienced the universe rises up to meet you and helps you out when you take a risk. And so, you know, a lot of people talk to me about imposter syndrome or who am I to do this, or this is scary. And so just do the thing. I mean, that's me in dance class. As I say, I'm like, dare to suck, be willing to show up and not be great yet or ever. And that is me in dance class. But the brilliant thing about that is that it's the ultimate rebellion against my inner perfectionist. And I can show up and just have fun because it's never going to be about being great or impressing others. No one's going to ever be impressed with my dancing. They're like, damn, this girl just showed up good for her. <laughs> You know what I mean? And so I think just bringing a little more fun and levity into the situations, but, um, well, let's, let's expand yeah. on that a little bit because in your book, you talk about <clears throat> that that's where we really thrive. And you had some research that you quoted. That's where we really thrive when we step across that edge of our own becoming into that, into that, that abyss of the unknown, but yet, it's been proven that that's where we really hunker down and get going and experience success. So maybe highlight on that just a little bit, because I thought that was very cool. That was very cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And that's what research says is that we have to be at a level of, of anxiety, not like full blown panic attack, but you have to be a little anxious and that's where you get peak performance and, and think of an athlete. Think of, I mean, I got Kobe Bryant's Mamba mentality behind me. His spirit is always around. Um, yeah. and, and just that, that spirit of excellence and, and greatness. And he spoke publicly about, you know, sometimes I show up at the arena, my back hurts, my legs hurt. <laughs> I feel old. I'm like, I don't got it. And this is, one of the greatest to ever play the game. But he said, right. I don't succumb to that. I, I, I rise up, I look it in the face and you just show up and, and do it anyway. But you have to be a little uneasy because when we stretch, this is how we expand and grow into the men and women who are capable of achieving our cherished goals. And so if you're a little scared, if you're a little anxious, great. It means you care. And, and to just show up, I mean, even I have moments, I'm sure we've all been here where it's just like, not another zoom meeting or I'm tired. I, I want to be in my pajamas. I don't want to do anything to my, I just, I've got nothing else to say. I'm exhausted, but you're like, I have to show up at this meeting at noon and you show up and just by, I mean, I do this before any meeting. I'm like, show up, bring the joy. Um, my intention is to deeply connect with whoever I'm meeting with. And, cool. and when I do that, the exhaustion goes away, the, whatever the fatigue goes away, because I'm so 
in the present moment and just, we're all feeding off each other. And then I'm like, I can't even believe I was tired or grumpy an hour ago. For, for me, it all changes the minute they start recording, right? I, it's just like, a, it's a magic transformation. It's like, okay, there's no going back now. You might as well have some fun. <laughs> that's kind of- yeah, right. that's like swimming to me. That's, I mean, that was what I learned from swimming. I mean, you're up on the block. It's take your mark, beep, off you go. There's no like, oh, wait a minute. Do I look cute enough to the guy in the stands? <laughs> oh, wait. Oh my gosh, that's the Olympic gold medalist. I, I I can't swim next to her. Or like all those things that come up. There's no like, excuse me, I need to think about and process this race before you. No, ready, go. And I, so, so I recommend that to people. P- picture yourself as a swimmer or a track runner. Where it's like, ready, go, and just go. And then you're prepared. That's what I mean. Be prepared. Right. Have fun with it. Have that strong purpose and a why, and then just show up and and have some fun and do your best. And that to me is success. That is so cool. Done, done is better advice. than perfect, right? Absolutely. Done is better than perfect. <laughs> well, talk to us a little bit about failure, then. Yeah, you I know think, what you just yeah. described was, I, and I learned to put failure in my pocket and keep moving forward. And then there's another one, keep failing forward. You'll be fine. Just keep failing forward. And you have some great advice about failure. Well, and that's what what my dance coach said to me in our first dance lesson. And I'll I'll first start by saying it's hilarious that I have a dance coach because I'm not a dancer and um, (laughs) (laughs) at all. Um, But that we, we showed up and she said, let's start with failure. And I thought, I can do that. You know, I, I don't know about these moves that you're, I mean, my, my dance coach, she, she looks straight out of flash dance. She can keep up with JLo and dance class. And I, you know, she does these moves. And I'm like, oh yeah. And that's how I'm going to look when I do it. And then it doesn't look the same. And there's that moment where it's like, oh, this is awkward. And why can't my body do those things? And, you know, we start to get into that space. But when someone says, let's start with failure, I'm like, oh, I can do that. And then it takes the pressure off. It's allowing yourself to just show up. And I can't say it enough, be present. And then in those moments, I become a dancer because I'm out of my head. I'm in my body. And that's, that's great advice too, is, you know, we have all this knowledge swirling around in our heads, but it Mm -hmm. doesn't become wisdom until we move it down into our hearts and our bones Uh, and our body. And then you take that wisdom with your hands or with your dancing feet, and then you implement it and you practice. So I think there's this other notion too, where the people are like, I don't need a coach. I don't need a therapist. I don't need a book. I don't need it. I'm, I'm good. And I worry about those people the most because I, I think of a Tom Brady who, you know, we were both big 10 athletes at the same time. You know, he's still winning Super Bowls, and my knees hurt when I go to Pilates. And I, all I say to that, and I, besides bowing down to Tom Brady, um, who's so disciplined, it's, you know, Tom trains harder than anyone, not because yeah. he's the worst, but because he's the best. So giving yourself that, that time to really um, nurture your goal and, and yourself and you're going to have moments you're going to want to throw in the towel. So that's why returning to your really strong why for me writing this book is the two men who I lost and, and having a purpose greater than yourself and, and do it for that organization or cause or your family on the days where it's hard to show up and, and experience rejection or failure after failure. But Hey, when you're fan, when you like get rejected, I say, say, thank you. Cause that is the universe, God, whatever you believe in sending you down a different road. Mm-hmm. And you could have like, gone into a pothole and messed everything up or you know you have a failure you think okay I'm meant to be doing something else but you learn from that there's so yeah. many nuggets in our failures yeah some of the best gifts I've I've received were from failures and and direction other directions that resulted in that so yeah it's, so I then totally, how would you define totally failure agree. then is failure just a um missed expectations Lesson? Yeah. Is it just something that you, you know, an expectation you had of yourself that, that didn't meet that expectation you had. And then now you've just got to figure out what to do next. And that's one question. But then the other question I had is, well, how do you find balance in all of that then if you are, if you want to succeed and you want to work really hard, but then there are some days when your body says, man, you need a break. You need (laughs) need to walk away from this. So who do you listen to? You know, at, at what point do you say, you know, I'm being told I need to relax, but I'm also thinking I got to work really hard today. So I'll be ready for tomorrow. So where do you find all that balance? I love both of these questions. They're so good. They're so powerful. They're so important. I think, and I'm just, I'm just going with what spirit is telling me now. I think failure is 
our unwillingness to show up. I think failure is um, not being willing to try. I think failure is falling asleep to the truth of who we are and not believing how powerful we are. I don't think it's about, I tried out for the team or applied for the job and I didn't get it. I, I mean, you put yourself out there. There, There's success in that, that you did that and that you, ha- that you had the skill set to even apply for the job or try out for the team. I think failure is when we don't believe that we are great or powerful or can do tough things or that we can do whatever we decide is important enough. So I think failure is more of a mindset and and a a coddling of our weaknesses and neuroses rather than an embracement of our power. And and then the other question is so important too. And and to answer that, um, you know, because I think of the days where when we can all sit and dial it in for 12 hours and do mediocre work and be uninspired and whatever. And so I think, you know, even research says this too. And some people say 30, 60, 90 minutes, but you know, do your thing, do your meetings, do your creative work. And then you just, you have to take breaks. And so, um, I think we also have to reframe and redefine what it means to, um, accomplish or achieve something because, you know, I wrote this article about the art of doing absolutely nothing years ago. And I talk about it in the book and that was far and away on this one publication. I mean, it's got nearly a million views, way more than other articles I've written. And I think I, I, I don't care about like views in terms of, oh, that's a success. It's just like, wow, that resonated with people because there is such this um, shame and guilt around not achieving at all times, especially in America. And what I say to people who have a hard time taking a day off or, or relaxing, I say, you're achieving relaxation, inner peace rest, rejuvenation. So when you come back to the task at hand, at least for me, I'm accomplishing 10 times more in a fraction of the time because I'm not stressed or pissed or whatever. I've had that time to decompress. And by the way, as you know, and that decompression decompression time, you get the inspiration, you get the divine downloads, you get the intuition that says, oh, you know, reach out to that person and collaborate on this. Oh, you know, why don't you write an article on this? I think it would be very beneficial to people because this is something you've struggled with. So you get the inspiration only when you're quiet and take that time for yourself. That's true. We had a guest on, what was it, a couple weeks ago, Jackie? Weeks ago, he wrote, yeah. a, wrote a book. The Art oh, of Stopping. The Art of Stopping. Yeah, and he, a- he was all about just stop. Yep. Just stop. <laughs> and he even stopped for 30 days so he could do exactly what you just explained. Right. Just collect his thoughts, collect his inspiration, collect his creativity, and figure out what's next. With, yeah. In, yeah, in yeah. a busy world, can you imagine? I mean, that's just to tell people that how their head would just explode. <laughs> yeah, their head explodes over that, but then no one's head explodes over. Um, I sleep two hours a night. I yell at my family because I'm so exhausted and sleep deprived. I haven't worked out in a month because what I, I mean, so. I get what you're saying. It's just our our society has it all backwards. And so it really is like unsubscribing from all of that, the struggle, the nonsense, and and really coming up with your own plan and system for yourself. That's what this book is. And plugging into that thought system because it's insane. And I have to consciously do it. Some days it's easy. I'm in the flow. And other days I'm like, oh, wow, you're really judging that person. Or, oh, wow, you really think that you need all these shiny objects to fulfill you and be happy. So, ooh, I think your inner fulfillment's a little off. Why don't you spend some time going within, reconnecting with spirit, reminding yourself what matters and who you are. And then I do that and I'm like, oh, I don't want all that stuff anyway. And yeah, I'm just going to go for a walk or call a friend or do some writing. Stop. Yep. Stop. Yep. Yeah. Stop. In fact, you know, it's, we've got generations now of busyness and I, it's really starting to affect our kids. We can see that our kids are so taught that every minute of every day, they have to be doing something. For doing them. something. And it's really a shame because they're losing who they are. And we've had lots of conversations with different guests about how we're all born with these empathic skills to be in touch with our source and who we are. And somehow it's normalized out of each of us because we're taught to just be busy, to always be working toward perfection, to make sure we're getting good grades. Um, that, you know, they hi- we hire tutors to make sure that we're, you know, we're succeeding according to grades or some system that tells us you have to be able to do all of this stuff. And, and it's a shame. And, um, and so I, I, there's a few questions I found in your book 
that we can ask ourselves. One of them is, how is sticking to what is familiar and safe keeping me stuck? You know, how, how is what I think is normal actually making it less normal based on who I, who I am? So um, tell us a little bit more about how your book helps us to figure out we don't have to do all this stuff to be who we really need to be and to be successful. Yeah. And, and what science says, and, and quite frankly, what my own life has dictated, but I love when science and data backs it up for people who are really into science and data is that all of those, like you mentioned, good grades, all of those things that we're taught and that we think are going to make us happy, good grades, good looks, money, notoriety, um, the car, the house, all of that stuff, the attractive partner. It's not just enough for our, us to look good. We need to have a really attractive partner. Um, those things actually don't move the needle in our well being. Yep. What moves the needle, according to science, according to my own life, that again, reminder every day <laughs> is um, exercise, sleep, time affluence, social connection acts of kindness and service, gratitude visits. One of the, one of my favorite things I wrote about in the book, life transforming practice Incre increases your success, your well being, your happiness meter by such a grand scale. Um, and yet we rarely do this. When do you write a gratitude letter and read it to someone? It's 99 point at, at their, at their funeral, if that, yeah. and even that, and, and they're, they're not even there to hear it or experience it or look into your eyes and then spend the rest of their lives in an uplifted space and deeply bonded to you. So, I, I mean, again, th these are practices. Some days you got it down and it's easy. Other days you're like, no, 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 society, I'm, I'm, watching, I'm watching our culture. I need all those things. And look, I like nice things as much as the next person. I'm not going to pretend I don't. I've got an expensive bed and the bedding. And, but again, because sleep, sleep, <laughs> sleep increases your well being. <laughs> you know, so I rationalize that. But I love nice things, but I'm also aware that the cute shirt, the whatever, is ultimately not making me happier. If I'm doing an act of service in my cute shirt, then yes, <laughs> right? Grat <So> gratitude, <laughs> gratitude is huge. You know, medical science has now proven that it releases all kinds of chemicals in the brains and it's the happiness drugs that are released. And I, in my book, I wrote that gratitude is the master key. That is oh. the master key to life mastery is, is a gratitude practice. It's just, a, it, it, it has an, the ability to create an amazing transformation. But it's not just enough for, you know, I'm grateful for my house. No, no, and my, no, no, like no. that stuff's great. And what's so powerful about the gratitude visit is that you're making it about someone else. And for me, yeah. writing a letter to my friend, Vanessa, and expressing my appreciation towards what she has done for my life and, and everything and having her receive that, um, when we can extend our gratitude, it, it's not just enough that we are successful and happy and grateful. It's important that we involve all the people around us, whether it's your yeah. spouse in your house, the cash out um, person at Trader Joe's, the person at whomever. Um, how hard is it to just smile and connect and look someone in the eyes and say, how's your day going? I really appreciate you. Like I'll say that Trader Joe's, I'm like, wow, you were really fast. Like you're speedy. You're awesome at your job. Thank you so much. And they kind of look at you like, like, whoa, you are an alien. What, uh, you know, or you're saying something at the post office yesterday, I said to the woman, I said, whoa, you are a, like a, an embodiment of patience. And she started laughing. I'm like, that woman stressed me out. You were so, and I, and I said, please write down your name so I can send the, you know, write a review for this. I'm like, this is the best post office I've mm. ever been in my life. We know the post office is not normally a pleasant experience, at least for me. Um, so I think it's just acknowledging people. I think there's an epidemic that we don't see or hear or acknowledge people anymore. Even the people we love or claim to love. I mean, how hard is it to say, oh, wow, thank you for washing the dishes. I appreciate you. That took two seconds and I'm sure it, it probably impacted you in a positive way, especially when you're not used to hearing it. You know, I'm reminded years and years ago, Jackie and I have been friends for, oh gosh, must be 10, 12 years. But I can remember years and years ago, Jackie and I belonged to, an, we're in Toastmasters, of course, and we had a club together. And one day after the meeting, she came up to me and she says, you know, Todd, I really enjoy being in a relationship with you. This is just a friend relationship. And I am so grateful. And I was like, Aww. really? 
And she said it a couple more times since then. So that's just something that she's picked up that she practices that helps with that connection. And both of us are really big in service. It's just letting, just like you said, just appreciating another person. Yeah. And look, you remember that from, from years ago. I was and- quite taken back. I was like, really? Okay. That's cool. I mean, <laughs> what else do I, what, 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 what can a person say other than feel happiness and, and just feel a, a warming heartfelt connection with this person connection. that is looking at you? And then who do you want to perform better for and show up for the person who you're like, I don't even, I've been working with this person 10 years, or I've been married to this person 10 years. I don't even know if they like me or do you want to show (laughs) up and do things? I mean, I'm more inspired same within the workplace. I mean, I have a client who his boss wrote him a five word text. He said, I look at it every day and I'm like, okay, so start doing that with your colleagues. Just like you knocked it out of the park. Great job. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe that was six words. He's like, I look at this text every day. And so that's great. But that also, it saddens me a bit because look at your reaction, really? Or it just shows how hungry a, we are for this. Yeah, but it can be done in in inauthentic way, I think is what you were saying. No, right. I think that people aren't used to genuine appreciation oh, yeah. or that's what I'm saying. I don't, I, I think people aren't really in authentic. I think they just like, don't say anything at all. Um, and yeah. even if they, they think it or feel it, they just, they don't express it. And so getting more comfortable, just, I, I mean, I recently sent an email to someone, it was a colleague's assistant and, you know, she scheduled the thing. I was like, oh good. I don't have to send the zoom invite. And I said, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And this woman wrote back to me. <laughs> She said, this was recent. She said, I've been in business 30 years. I've never once had anyone say, I appreciate you in an email. And it, mm. it, it kind of broke my heart. It wasn't like, oh, how nice that I said that. But again, three words. That's just how I That's do business. Cool. Or two, And um, can, we need to do a little more of that with each other. Well, yeah, because imagine what if that woman was having her worst day ever. <sighs> and just, and, and you taking that opportunity to say a few things like that made her choose a different choice than maybe she would have that day. I mean, who knows? We never know. It's, it's, it's words are our superpowers. This is what I teach our, our students is words are your superpower because you can make someone feel on top of the world or you can crush them yeah. by, mm. by just a few that's words. That's so true. So you have to be really careful at what you say to people. And that's part of our, our work is that we help them to find the right words get rid of the ones that are hurtful and use the right words to help people feel better. And it makes a huge difference. And I I don't think they're being taught that stuff in school. And with our parents being so busy and both mom and dad working so hard and our kids just, the teachers are their influence. And so if they're not getting that in school, they're not getting it. (laughs) They're just not getting it. It's unfortunate, but so, so Kate, tell us a little bit more about some of your other steps. What are some of the, the 10 steps that you have in, in this workout? Maybe, maybe I had something else in my notes, Kate. Okay. Maybe, maybe talk to us because we touched on it a little bit and that's the ego. Mm. How does that play in our decision-making, in our ability? You talked about, you were talking about how you get on with your busy day and you have to do this and you have to do that. And that's the ego really driving us. So I think that a practice we can all, I I do it religiously every day. It's as as much a part of my life as eating and sleeping. And it's what I call my sit and stare time. And that's minimum five minutes a day. I do more like an hour, either in a row, break it up in between meetings, things like that. If I'm, you know, hormonal or cranky pants, I'm like, you might need two hours today. Like you're really, who? Um, So (laughs) that's, that's another cool part though. Is, is you just pulled out the third party perspective, right? And you're witnessing your the way you're acting and calling yourself out on that. That's pretty yeah, powerful I mean, stuff. It's just like, oh, you are cranky. You need to go sit. You are spinning. You need to go sit your butt down. And again, it's it's non negotiable. I think adult timeouts need something that's implemented because I see a lot of adult meltdowns that you know go to your room, <laughs> and and that's probably great advice that that we can take. And so. You know, Blaise Pascal has this beautiful quote that says, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Mm -hmm. And that is just the biggest truth drop and bomb. And and this past year during the lockdown, the sit and stare time just saved me in every way, shape and form because there was so much to process. And I just needed to sit, 
and, and reflect and, and check in with myself. Like I'm a small child and ask, how are you, how are you doing? No. You know, what's working? What, what do you need right now? And listening for the answer, not with the TV on and the phone going mm. and Instagram on quietly and listening, not to the ego. This is answering your question. We're not listening to the ego that tells us where we're not getting it right. How we don't add up. We're not good enough. We're listening to that divine wisdom that we can download at any time. We always have access to it. Bring it down into your heart and your body. So the wisdom and the truth. And in that time, you start to hear the truth and to process and get the answers. And then you also develop this really uh, kind and compassionate relationship with, with yourself where instead of, man, you messed that up or why'd you say that <laughs> dumb thing? Or like, man, you've gained some weight, like lay off the cookies. It's you're saying things like, I'm really proud of you you did some really hard things today or great job handling that upsetting email. You um, did not react right away. You, you pressed pause and you were in a place of non-reactivity. And I, I really admire your, your growth. I mean, and, and it almost sounds absurd because again, <laughs> we don't talk to ourselves like that, but yeah. it, it will become a practice. And then again, your default setting becomes this and you live your life from this place where you naturally attract the people and experiences and opportunities and abundance rather than striving or forcing or controlling. And that is the ego where this is the spirit and listening to that divine wisdom. You have to try. I mean, my life has become case in point. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't strive. I get, I mean, I, I work very hard, but People email me, people call me, the opportunities come to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. You put yourself in a place where you're in the flow of opportunity. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I've just, I've become the person who it's, you know, even a friend said to me, I got a really big job a few years ago and I was just telling him about it. And he said, I can't believe you're not more excited about this. And I was very excited, but it was more of just like, I have done so much work and, and then surrendered and released, you know, the expectations and, and the outcome. And so, meaning I have become the person who attracts this. I have become the person who attracts this kind of salary, these kind of clients, these kinds of opportunities and experiences. I'm um, not because I just sat here eating bonbons on the couch all day. I, again, I've put in the work and then so you're, you're, you're you sharpening your action. sword. You're, you're really fine tuning your instrument. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so do you, you tell us action. how to do that? Tell us how to do that in your book. <laughs> As, that's the whole book. I mean, it, <laughs> it, it, it is 320 pages like <laughs> laid out for you and, and with many different ways and, and experience in science. If, if journaling's your thing, meditations, the coach that's... Kate check-ins. I know not everyone can afford executive coaching. So it's it's all the questions that I, I ask my clients to really get under the hood of the car and, and, and go through the coaching process. But, you know, I can't do the exercises for you. Just like at the gym, you know, your personal trainer can't do the push-ups and pull-ups for you. That's on you. But the great news about that is you are being, you are building the inner musculature. Then you're able to do it on your own. Do you, you have a copy of the book? It's such a pretty book. Where'd you get yes. that cover? I, I, I worked with um, New World Library, my amazing publisher, and it was just a little, a That's labor of love. Book. The full, as my friend said, she said, it's very you. It's very you. <laughs> a 10-step system to shed your self-doubt, strengthen your spiritual core, and create a fun and fulfilling life. And that's ultimately what it's really all about, too, is having fun and living a fulfilling life. It's not about money. It's not about your accomplishments. But it's, it's life mastery. Yeah. And, and it can be about money and your accomplishments. That's certainly part it of does. you. And, and yeah, but, but what we're saying is that it, it really is an inside job, all of it, because the, the money and, and, and both acquiring it, maintaining it, what you're going to do with it, the impact you want to have, the ultimate fulfillment is an inside job. So we are getting really strong on the inside and, and, and the confidence, and then you're making better decisions. And like I said, you will naturally attract that because you've become a different person on the inside. One of the things you mentioned as we were talking about the, the language that we use to ourselves is you've got some tips in there to reframe, reframe what we're saying to ourselves in a different way. Can you talk a little bit about that? What, what does that look like? Yeah, I think reframing is a really powerful yeah. tool and, and it starts with two words, what if. So 
you know, I even talk about, uh, I'm a perfectionist and it's, it's getting in my way and it's holding me back. And my friend, Natasha reframed that into, you know, you, you label yourself a perfectionist because you care. And she said, I think you have a respect for mastery. And I loved that. I said, Ooh, I love that. So it went from a negative connotation and a setback mm-hmm. to a positive thing. I care. And I have a respect for mastery. And so living from that place and, and making it a positive rather than like, Oh, this is holding me back. And so a lot of times people will say, Oh, this is so hard. And so I do the, what, the, what if practice with them, the reframe, what, what if, if it if, wasn't hard? It, what if this wasn't hard? What if this was easy? Mm-hmm. What if this was a perfect opportunity to grow? What yeah. if this was your chance to leave this job and start your own business? What if this was the perfect opportunity to collaborate with, you know, Tony and Jill or whatever. Um, and, and then when you're in that place, you're in a place of curiosity and fun and excitement and possibility as opposed to, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're low energy going into it, right? You've already defeated yourself before you even started. And that's just not a good way to start out on something. Yeah, oh my- absolutely. Oh my goodness, ladies, we only have about five minutes left. Kate, this has just been, you are so full of energy. You're so full of it, lady. You're just full of it. You know, but I'm so glad you brought that up because this is something that I I work with people on there, whether we call it your special sauce, original medicine, your, your unique gift. And, and my, my swim coach said it, you know, 20 years ago, he said, you have an infectious enthusiasm. So that's my thing. And so that's something that I've identified. I can leverage it when I'm, I'm triggered or I'm having an off day or off moment. And so I invite everyone, you guys probably know yours, but to to start thinking of your X factor, your special sauce and something that you can tap into and lean into when you're struggling or when you've stretched your comfort zone and you're feeling a little scared or overwhelmed. I lean into my, my strength of humor and my strength of, like you said, energy. I mean, I just, you know, there's moments I'm I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like, Oh, I'm so tired, but (laughs) I can tell when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing because my favorite thing on earth is connecting with people. So find your favorite thing on earth, uh, see if you can get paid to do that favorite thing, but also, (laughs) you know, so my enthusiasm, social connection, win-win. And um, I I think too, if you're feeling low vibe or low energy, I don't know, maybe you need to find a new place to live or Or some new friends or, or just stop. But also I think, um, we need to start doing not just what we want. What we want is dictated on society or what mom and dad say or the friend next door is doing, but what do you really want? I always like to ask our guests about a test. You heard me do it to Jackie in the beginning, but does a testimonial start out? When did this book come out? April 27th. Yeah, so it's pretty fresh. So there must be some fresh comments that you can share with us that you've heard people write or say about reading the book. Yeah, I think a a lot of people are just saying, oh my gosh, it feels like you are my best friend talking directly to me. (laughs) It's so conversational. It's, I feel like I'm just hanging out with my best friend. Um, I hear that a lot. I think a lot of people are resonating with all of the science in it. And so I, I had a man of like, actually he's, I looked him up. He's a billionaire businessman. And he, he got my book because his company sponsored an event where I spoke in New York city. And he said, this is not just some like self-help or like chick book. He said, this is a bona fide business book. And so he saw it from that perspective. So it really is packed full with, with research and practical steps and strategies and tried and true methods, but it is also fun. And I made it very, I mean, I'm a broadcast journalism or a journalist. You <laughs> it know? is a fun book. You've got exercises yeah. in there and questions you ask, you ask people to answer specific questions. And of course the journaling and like you said, if it works for you, it works for you, but go through it. It's, it, it is an exercise book. And I like what you said earlier is you can open it up anywhere and start at any place. Yeah. Sometimes you just need that refresher and reminder. I certainly do. I turn to this book again and again. And, and that is because I, I would, I would like to be like Tom Brady and, and win Super Bowls, whatever that is to you. And that takes practice and you got to keep doing the exercises. You know, there's no like, oh, I've got a six pack. I'm done. I never have to go to the gym again. I mean, I've never had a six pack, so I wouldn't know, but I imagine you've got to work even harder to maintain that. So I think it's just about asking yourself, what kind of life do I want? What kind of relationship do I want? 
and, and really being willing to show up and, and, and never forgetting how very powerful you are. Very cool. Check out Kate's book, The Full Spiritual Workout. There it is. There's a copy of it. A 10-step system to shed your self-doubt, strengthen your spiritual core, and create a fun and fulfilling life. Thank you so much, Kate, for showing up as you today. Did you have fun? I had a blast. I could I could go forever, and I'm glad that we're going to connect off of this. And and, and are, again, sure. all about community and collaboration and connection. And and we'll we'll put our money where our mouth is with that after this call. So I'm excited nice. to be connected with all of you and your beautiful audience. Yeah, and you can go to our website at www.lifemasteryradio.net or .com, whichever one you prefer. And Kate's website link is right there. Jackie, did you have fun today? Oh, I had a blast. It was delightful to meet Kate and to Oh yeah, she's so just much full of it. Yeah. <laughs> you sound like, like really, my mother in a good way. <laughs> oh my gosh. We all had a blast today. And that's what we want you to do is tell your friends about this really cool show called Life Mastery Radio with Todd and Jackie. We have a blast. Our guests have a blast. And I'm sure if you were watching this, and not if. I'm sure after watching this, you had a blast too. That's about all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please, please, please tell a friend about it because the more the better, right? And lastly, please, please make it a great day because it is all about choice. And choose to check out Kate's book. Bye-bye for now. Bye. <laughs>